Welcome to Best Practices in Problem Solving. In this video, we will examine some important information related to problem solving and some activities to do in your classroom. In order to solve a problem correctly, students must first be able to read the problem, second, understand what was read, and then third, transform those words that they read into a strategy, then lastly, students must be able to apply a mathematical procedure. However, research is telling us that over half of the errors that children make are in the first three steps of this, before they even begin to solve the problem. So let's talk about what's causing these errors. Often what's causing this is the focus on keywords. This strategy of teaching keywords is extremely limited because keywords don't help students understand the big situation and the big picture of the problem. And secondly, keywords can really be misleading because the same word can take on a different meaning in different situations. Let's take a look at the keyword altogether. Typically, teachers say that altogether means add. However, in these three problems, uh, the word altogether is used in each, but only one of the problems actually requires students to add to solve. When deciding on a problem solving strategy, make sure to select one that helps students dig in and better understand the problem. Take a look at an ineffective strategy versus an effective one. This first strategy uh, is called the cube strategy, and you would use it with any type of math problem. First, you would circle the key numbers, underline the question, and box any math action words. Now, at first, I wasn't sure what a math action word was, so I dug a little bit deeper and I found out action words are the same as keywords. So, I would box in all. And now, as a student, I'm ready to solve the problem. Okay, so how many seashells does Billy need to find? Well, 14. 31 in all. So I'm going to add. So Billy needs to find 45 seashells. However, that strategy just led me to the wrong answer because I never was focused on reading the problem and deeply understanding the problem. Instead, we need to find strategies that help us or help students really dig into the problem and think about the meaning, help students visualize. One good strategy for this is the stop sign strategy. And I'm sure you've probably seen this strategy before, so I won't go through it right now. There is more information about the stop sign strategy on the CNI Google site. This first activity is to do a close reading on a word problem. We need to get students used to thinking about what they read and doing close readings in math, not just ELA. In ELA, a close reading is where students are given a short reading passage. Students dive into the reading with limited pre-reading activities. Then, students focus in on the characters, the main idea, important details, and any crucial vocabulary. They are also given opportunities to discuss the text with others and make predictions. When doing a close reading in math, it is important that the teacher covers the question in a word problem in order to have students focus in on the situation. When the question isn't covered, students tend to go right to that question and just do something with the numbers. As students do their close reading on a math problem, they might want to complete a T-chart stating the things that they notice and the questions that they have. Then, students should predict what the question that is covered up might be. Just as in reading, we will welcome all predictions. Then, the teacher will reveal the question at the end of the word problem, and students will compare their predictions to the actual question. The Meaningful Math Tasks on the Cumberland County CNI Google site are great for doing close readings. Let's take a look. Here we see a Meaningful Math Task where the teacher covered the question at the end of the problem. Students would then read the problem, and the class would discuss any tricky vocabulary. Then, partners would have an opportunity to discuss what they notice from the problem and what they wonder. The I wonder statements really could be anything. It could be a question that the teacher could possibly ask. For example, a student might say, I wonder how many total pictures Paula had. Or it could be things like, I wonder where Paula took these pictures. All of the I wonder statements should be seen as valuable, and these really do help students dig into the problem situation. Students would then share out their I notice and I wonder statements. Students would predict the question that is hiding, and then the teacher would reveal the question, 
and students would solve. The purpose of this next activity is for students to make sense of problem situations, make judgments about the reasonableness of numbers in a problem, and to view guess and check as a legitimate problem solving strategy. In this activity, the teacher shows students a word problem that includes a sentence at the end of the problem that tells the answer. However, all numbers in the problem are covered up. Students start by brainstorming reasonable numbers to insert into the problem. Then, students are given the actual numbers to place in the problem. Here is a first grade example of what makes sense. The teacher has covered up all of the numbers in the problem. The students start by brainstorming their own numbers. Then, the actual numbers are given to the students, and they use guess and check to figure out the, where the numbers go. Our third activity is called digging deeper. Digging deeper can be a warm-up activity for the beginning of your math block. Here, students look at a set of data or information all week long. Each day, students are asked a different question about this information. On the last day, the teacher might even give students the answer and this time say, okay, look at the information. If my answer is four, what could my question be? Digging deeper allows students to solve trickier and trickier problems across the week that focus on one problem situation instead of being given a different situation each time. In this example, students look at class pet data all week long and answer different questions about it each week. At the end of the week, the, student, the teacher might say, if my answer is two, what could my question be? Our last activity is called headline stories. A headline is a brief caption explaining a big story. An equation can also be a brief way to capture the big story. Here, the teacher would give students an equation and have them create their own story around this headline. Headline stories help students attach meaning and context to a mathematical equation or an operation. Here are two examples of headline stories. The students would first solve the missing information in the equation and then tell a story about that equation. All of the activities referenced in this video can be found in the Cumberland County Schools CNI Google site. Just go to the elementary math page, look at the left hand side, click on additional resources, and then click on problem solving activities.